So I'm watching Dub Dub Keynote casually expecting a new Siri animation or some vague AI announcement. And then they drop this, a swift code snippet, a local model, no cloud, no keys. And I sat there thinking, wait, did Apple just give us on-device chat GPT? Because if you're an iOS dev, this is bigger than it looks. This isn't about building AI apps. This is about making your app smarter from inside Swift. And today, we're going hands-on with foundation models. Hey, I'm Daniel, and this is Solo Swift Crafter. I'm a solo iOS dev building apps with Swift UI, AI tools like Claude and Cursor, and a lot of coffee. On this channel, I share tips, devlogs, and build in public experiments, the kind of stuff I wish I had when I was learning. Today, we're diving into one of the quietest, most powerful announcements from WWDC 25. It's called Foundation Models, and it changes the way we think about AI in Swift. Let's get into it. So yeah, one of the most exciting things to come out of WWDC 25, and honestly, something that's been living rent-free in my brain ever since I saw the keynote, is this whole idea of Apple Foundation models. This is Apple stepping into the AI space in a way that's so Apple. No splashy chatbot demo, no surprise acquisition, just a quiet drop. Here's a powerful model. It runs locally, it's private, and you can plug it right into your app like, uh, like any other API. No drama, no big claims. But under the hood, this changes everything. And, and I'll be honest, the, I didn't see it coming. I was watching the keynote like everyone else, half expecting a vague Siri upgrade or a new cloud service. But then they showed a Swift code snippet. Then they said, on device, and I actually sat up and said, wait, did they just give us local LLMs? And what's wild is this doesn't feel like some tacked on AI play. It feels native, thoughtful, like it belongs in Swift. This isn't about building some flashy AI app. It's about making the app you already love smarter, lightweight, modular, respectful of the user. The kind of shift that doesn't shout, it just works. All right, let's break this down like we're debugging together. What Apple actually shipped is a local language model, a slimmed down version of something like ChatGPT that runs directly on your device. I mean, literally on device, no servers, no open AI keys, no cloud. It's right there in your pocket responding to text. And here's the kicker. It's just part of Swift now. No separate setup, no API weirdness. You import it like this, import foundation models. Now I'll admit the name threw me for a second. I saw foundation models and thought, wait, are we jamming AI into foundation now? Spoiler, nope. It's a separate framework, just wearing a familiar coat. Once that clicks, the experience is elegant. You realize I'm literally talking to a model that lives inside my app. It's kind of surreal. Let me show you how simple it is to try this. Picture this. You want your app to respond to natural language. Something like, give me a productivity tip or summarize this text. But you don't want to deal with cloud calls. Check this out. And that's it. No API keys, no backends, just a few lines of Swift. And now your app talks back. A couple quick things. It's a wait because even on device, it takes a few milliseconds to respond. It's thinking. It's try because inference can fail, like if memory runs low, but it's rare. I tested this inside a Swift UI preview just for fun, and it worked. I typed a prompt, hit build, like, oh, why it's, and the model responded. In the preview, no network, zero config, actual magic. The whole thing feels like URL session, but instead of calling a server, you're calling a brain. Okay, now we're getting into my favorite part. It's not just strings. You can ask the model to give you structured Swift data, like actual type structs. Check this out. So it's, you add at foundation model, and now the model knows how to fill this out from a plain English prompt. Hop. 
boom, it returns a filled destination uh, with real data. Think codable, but flipped. Instead of decoding JSON, you're decoding language into data. I tried this with a workout struct too. And I said, give me a 15 minute beginner core routine. It nailed it, filled in all the fields, no rejects, no custom parser, just data. It's one of those, wait, this actually works moments. All right. Uh, this part, honestly, it might be the most fun. So foundation models introduces this concept of tools. And if you've played around with open AI function calling, this will feel familiar. But the difference is it's all local and it's pure Swift. Here's the idea. You take a regular Swift function, one that already exists in your app, and you wrap it so the model can use it when it sees fit, like literally call it. Here's what that looks like. Uh, now, when a user types, what's the weather in Paris? The model can decide to call get weather Paris, why well, gosh, I under the hood and use that result in its response. That's not just text generation, that's reasoning and execution. When I tried this out, I wired up a mock Pomodoro timer. The model read my prompt, start a 25 minute Pomodoro and it triggered the timer, like the actual Swift code executed. That moment blew my mind because it meant the model wasn't just a responder. It was becoming a kind of lightweight AI agent inside my app. You're not just getting answers. You're enabling behavior. That's a huge shift. Sometimes your data models have properties that need a little context. Like say you've got a field name rational. That could mean a lot of things. Is it a Boolean, a logic score, a text label? This is where at guide comes in. You can annotate that property with a plain language hint for the model. And suddenly the model gets it. It knows what kind of value belongs here. Before I added this, the model was giving me answers like approved or safe. But with the guide, I got responses like balanced and serene or slightly chaotic, which, yeah, maybe a little poetic, but honestly, it fit the vibe perfectly. Guides are like little flashlights. They don't force anything, but they illuminate your intent. So what could you actually build with all this? I've been noodling on a few ideas. A workout app that generates personalized routines from a simple text prompt. A journaling app that suggests tags or themes for each entry. A recipe app that turns what's in my fridge into a full meal plan. A travel app that recommends destinations based on mood and weather. And the coolest part, you don't need a backend, no server logic. You define the struct, wrap the function, and boom, you've got smart behavior fully on device. It's not about building an AI app. It's about building smarter, faster, more human features. Zooming out for a second. Let's appreciate what makes this approach. So Apple, everything happens locally, no network, no token juggling, no privacy panic. You're not relying on some external black box. The whole model is bundled with your app, which means it's fast, it's private, it's under your control. I ran a battery test on five prompts in a row. Response time was snappy and the battery only dipped about 3% on an iPhone 15 Pro. Totally reasonable. This isn't about writing novels. It's about making apps feel thoughtful, instant, personal, and it feels right. For once, AI doesn't feel like a layer. It feels like it belongs. Section eight feels like Swift because it is. So yeah, it feels like Swift because it is. Here's what I love most at foundation. Uh, model feels like codable. Tool is just another protocol. At guide is like a comment, but smarter. It's all stuff we already know. You don't need to learn prompt engineering or wrangle tokens or fight a new SDK. This question mark, this is just Swift. Clean typed native Swift. It's not a new tech stack. It's a new layer of expression built into the one we already love. 
Okay, now I'm talking directly to indie devs. You've probably had ideas you shelved because you didn't want to build a backend or deal with tokens or pay OpenA I just to test an idea. Now you don't have to. You can prototype a smart feature uh, or a whole app without leaving Swift. You're not asking a cloud what to do. You're in control. You're shipping real features. This puts power back in the hands of solo devs, and that's something I'll always root for. So yeah, if you're an iOS dev, this is a moment. Here's your checklist. Fire up Xcode, import foundation models, define a struct, wrap a function, write a prompt, try it, see what happens. Worst case, you learn something. Best case, you build something way smarter than you thought possible uh, with almost no extra code. If you're still here, uh, thank you. That already tells me you're the kind of dev who's curious, thoughtful, and maybe even a little obsessed with clean architecture and clever features. What's one wild or weird way you could use foundation models in your app? Drop it in the comments. I'd love to see what you're dreaming up. Personally, I'm working on a journaling prototype that tags entries based on your tone. All offline. More on that soon. And hey, if you want more indie iOS builds, AI-powered Swift tips, and behind-the-scenes devlogs, you know what to do. Subscribe, bell icon, the whole deal. I'll be back soon with another experiment. Until then, um, keep crafting, stay curious, peace.